in this video, I want to talk about the lie that's been perpetuated through the entrepreneur social media landscape. So you'll see all these videos where people will tell you how to go from zero to one million, right? And they make it seem as if it's super easy. They make it seem like there's, there's like nothing to it. However, that's the reason why a lot of these guys get called scammers or people say, man, oh, it's a scam, it was a scam. And their main reason they say it was a scam is because it was marketed like a scam. These motherfuckers will tell you it's easy and you can make a million dollars with no money. And I'm here to tell you that's bullshit. And I know that because I've built several uh, multi eight figure businesses. I've also consulted and done marketing for other businesses. And I run a coaching business where I've helped tons of students. Oh, I'm gonna be honest. Only about it's like less than 10 of my students have ever like made a million dollars in one year. But I've helped literally thousands of them get to 100,000, 200,000, or even 300,000. Like literally thousands of people do that, go from zero to hundreds of thousands. I only got about 10 millionaire students. The thing is, when I market, when I tell people about my, my coaching or whatever, if you've seen any of my ads, I'm saying, hey, it's not a get rich scheme. All right. If you're lazy, if you're not willing to work super hard, maybe harder than you've ever worked in your whole life, don't fucking do this shit. Right, I do the opposite. And that's why you don't see a lot of people out here saying that Brandon's scamming them because I set the precedence. Hey, this is going to be the hardest thing you've ever done in your life. <laughs> and you probably don't want to do it. You're probably better off just keeping your job and working only 40 hours a week and just have a fucking regular guy life because that's the truth. It's really hard to go to a million dollars. In fact, I want to give you some statistics. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, Approximately 20% of new businesses failed during the first two years, 45% failed during the first five years, and a whopping 65% failed during the first 10 years. So I want you to think about that, right? Would you buy a car if you knew that within two years, 20% of them would explode or fucking crash or be fucked up? Of course you wouldn't do it. If you knew that 20% of planes fucking crash in the first two years right you wouldn't do it it's not that it's hard it's that people are soft right because the word hard is relative difficulty is, is relative right when you see me doing handstand push-ups freestanding handstand push-ups all different kinds i can do it on command right it's easy for me but at one point it was difficult right but what happened was it didn't get easier i got better so now it is easier so it's not that business is hard, it's that people suck. And you probably suck. But the people who find business easy is they develop the skill set and they know what to do and they maybe they got some training and or coaching, all right? So difficulty is always relative. So you're gonna have to change your mindset. I never want you to say that something is hard or something is difficult. You wanna say, hey, I need to improve because there is somebody who can do it easily. Somebody could do it easily. And if you were better, it would be easy for you. And that goes across the board for all things, right? So it's hard for most people and it'll be hard for you at first, but it, once you learn the skills and you get better at doing things, you're gonna be way better. And once you improve your skill set, it will be easy for you. You won't find it as difficult as you previously did. Just like initially when I first started with the handstand pushups, it was super difficult. It took me six months just to be able to hold a handstand and then another six months to be able to do a pushup without falling over on my back. You know what I'm saying? But now I can do it on command. Easy as nothing. Just understand it's not easy at first. And despite what these YouTubers say or these social media gurus or anyone selling their courses and shit say, it's not easy yet initially. Initially it will not be easy for you. It wasn't like that for anyone initially. Right, but when you see people with all these different businesses, it's because they got so good that it became easy. And that's what I want to help you do in this video, or at least put you on the path and show you the steps you need to take to ensure success and to be able to accomplish this with greater ease. Now, I just want to say another thing about the, the scammers and the fake gurus. I've never bought a course and I felt like, damn, I was scammed. Every course I ever bought, and I buy a lot of courses. I pretty much buy everybody's course. Everybody who has a course, I bought it and went through it. And it was something I, I took from it. But if I went into it thinking that it was going to be easy, I'd have been like, oh, this shit is a fucking scam. And I think that's the problem. That's the problem with the whole guru space is the way they market their shit. Not necessarily the actual shit, but the way they present the shit as if it's not shit. They present it as if it's you know going to be a, a cakewalk. 
as if there's gonna be no difficulty associated you don't need to spend no money and everything's just gonna be super simple and the whole path is gonna be an unbroken boulevard of green lights you won't encounter any difficulty along the way and they market like that and that's just not the case that's just not the case but the reason so many people fall victim to this is because they want it to be easy and then these people take advantage of your love of ease and comfort right but i just want you to think how would your life be different if you did not want it to be easy think about that most of your challenges come because you are running from pain and discomfort but what if you didn't want it to be easy right most of your pain actually comes from your desire for comfort and ease but what if you took pride in doing the things that other people found difficult right think about that for a second what if you took pride in being able to withstand discomfort how would that change your perspective how would that change your behavior right because if i was competing with someone and make no mistake when you are in business it is a competition right and if i was competing with someone i would love it if they were always looking for the easiest route i would love it if they were looking for the most comfortable way to win if they were constantly uh, attempting to avoid discomfort and looking for the fucking easiest way to do things oh man they'd be so easy to beat they'd be so easy to beat even if they were smarter than me even if they were more talented than me even if they had more resources at their disposal i would crush them <laughs> with my sheer resilience my determination i'd emerge victoriously as usual because I would be willing to do what they wouldn't, what they're not willing to do. So before we even get into this, you, I want you to know that it's hard to build a successful business. All right, it's super hard. And most of you guys ain't cut out for it. Most of you guys are too soft and weak, but I want you to understand that pain and discomfort, they're like the gatekeepers. If success was a nightclub, the bouncers would be pain and discomfort. And, but they're not checking your fucking IDs, right? But they're checking to see if you're soft or weak. And if you are soft or weak, you would not be permitted to enter. But if you have any toughness about you, any sh mental strength about you, then to write in, they'll let you write in. You know what I'm And the strongest among us will be sitting in the VIP section. I want that to be you. So I want you to go into it with the right mindset. Now, here's the thing. When it comes to building a business, every level, there's a new devil. And that's why I kind of laugh when somebody says, hey, man, you can start in zero and make a million dollars. Right? That's fucking stupid because there, there's different levels to this shit and we're going to get into it but the things you do at one level won't translate to the next level for example the, the things that get you from zero to 10k a year right <laughs> right or those aren't the same things that are going to get you to 100k a year and the things that got you to 100k per year aren't the same things that are going to get you to uh, a million a year all right so we i want to break these down into levels this is zero to 10k a year at this point it, your business is more of a fucking hobby you know what I'm saying? Yeah, 10K a year, right? Your business is more of a fucking hobby, right? But then when you go from 10K, this is when you start taking the zero, you make it between 10 and 100K a year. Oh, okay. Now the shit kind of has legs. And 100K to a million, and then we'll go 1 mil to 10 mil. These are all different levels. These, these are the basically the different. I probably shouldn't have drawn it like that, but whatever. Fuck it. We're going to talk about zero to 10K. This is like, oh, motherfuckers just getting started, man. You're just getting it started. It's more, it's almost like a hobby. My handwriting sucks. It looks like graffiti, but like not the cool kind. <laughs> it looks like a guy who just started graffiti like today. It's day one of graffiti and that's how my handwriting looks. Don't worry about it, it's not a big deal. All right, the reason it's so difficult to start is because you have to do everything, right? So this is you. And then you got to think about all the different parts of your business. So you have to create or deliver the product, right? The product or service right you have to do all the marketing you have to do all the sales you have to do all the customer service you have to do all the counting and there's other shit you got to do too but that's just what i'm saying you got to do everything so you have to learn how to do all this stuff even if you know how to make a good product you might not know how to do sales you might not know how to market you might not know how to handle customers you might not know accounting right you have to do all of this stuff and this is that level one challenge and this is why most people fail because it's so much stuff you have to learn right it's, it's so much you have to learn to to even get your shit off the ground so it's prof so it's profitable the key here is you are going to have to work super hard 
right? There's no getting around it. It's going to take so much work to get it off the ground because you have to learn all these skill sets and you have to get good at them. You're probably not good at them. You have to work super hard. I recommend at this point that you keep your job. I know there's a lot of advice on the internet saying that when you want to start a business, you just burn your boats, quit everything and just fucking jump into business. That is some of the stupidest shit I have ever heard. It'd be difficult for me to overstate how fucking stupid that is, especially if you got responsibilities. For example, when I started my business, you know, it was right after my father committed suicide, right? So I was taking care of the family, taking care of my mom, taking care of my, my sister, nephew, grandma. And there's people who depended on me, man. <laughs> there's people who like really fucking depended on me. And there's no way that I could fucking just, uh, fuck it, I'm just gonna go all in. You know, that would have been comically irresponsible, right? So I had multiple jobs during that time. It was during the financial uh, crisis of 08. These people were master's degrees working at Starbucks because we had record unemployment. All these businesses were going out of business. It was the worst recession since the fucking Great Depression. And I was working like four jobs, four different jobs. And I was trying to start my business on the side. But now imagine that, and you have to learn all these skills. You have to get good at them, right? It was difficult. The only way you're gonna be able to work, keep your job and start your business is you're going to have to start really using your calendar. You're gonna have to really use your calendar. Your Google Calendar is the one you should use. And this way you, you should plan out every hour of every day because you had most of you guys have more time than you think. I do this all the time, but there's only four things a man has to do. You have to sleep. Obviously, you have to work because you're going to have a job. Right? You, you have to spend time with your, your family and you have to work out. Ladies, if you're watching this and your man doesn't work out, you don't have a boyfriend. You got a girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? You're a lesbian. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's, it's all good, right? But uh, he may have misled you by making you believe that he was a real man when he was really just, uh, he was just a woman. You know what I'm saying? That's cool. Ain't no problem. All right. So these are the four things you have to do. Now, just add up how many hours a week do you spend doing this? If you sleep eight hours a night, that's 56. Seven days a week, that's 56 hours. You Let's say you got a job. You're working 40 hours a week. If you work out hour a day, seven hours a week. I don't know how much time you guys got to spend with your friends and family, man. That, that's up to you. But, um, shit, man, I don't know. Fuck it. What are you guys? <laughs> fucking let's call it, let's call it 20. Right. <laughs> let's just call, that's a lot. That's a fucking part-time job right there, man. <laughs> right. And that leaves you with, that means the total is 230. Right now there are 168 hours in every week. So that leaves you with Bam, you got 45 out, 45 hours. That's a whole nother work week. And that's what this is the time you should be using to spend building your business. This is where you're going to make your money. You don't have to quit your job. You got time. But the thing is, you got to plan your time. You're, you're wasting so many time. And maybe this is not going to work. These numbers aren't going to work exactly the way you are. These numbers may not work exactly the way I've written them right. But you just whatever they are for you, man. Write, write it down. Do this exercise now. All right. How much are you spending work? How much are you spending with your family? How much you spending fucking working out? Whatever it is. And see what's left. Every time people do this exercise, they realize, man, I'm wasting a lot of time. And the reason you're wasting so many time, so much time is because you're not planning your time in your calendar. Now, I have other videos um, and we'll post them somewhere around about how to manage your time effectively and how to use Google Calendar to squeeze more time out of each day. Uh, but it's going to be sacrifices here. Right. This first level is all about sacrifice. And I'm not telling you to sacrifice your health. I'm not telling you to sacrifice your family. I'm not telling you to sacrifice sleep. I'm not even telling you to quit your job. You're going to have to sacrifice the other shit. So when I was building my business, it was two years. I didn't watch no football. I didn't watch no basketball. I didn't go to no parties. I ain't seen no movies. I was spending time with my family. I was spending time work. And, you know, I was I was doing what I needed to do, but I wasn't playing video games. I wasn't getting high, smoking weed. This is the most difficult part of starting a business right here is the sacrifice. But the thing is, you got to make a sacrifice either way, right? If you don't sacrifice for your goals, then your goals become the sacrifice. If you don't sacrifice for your goals, then your goals become the sacrifice. So you have to sacrifice either way. It's like, do you want to sacrifice momentary pleasures? Do you want to sacrifice immediate gratification or do you want to sacrifice your dreams and aspirations, right? Like the sacrifice either way, you just got to decide which one you want to. And I'm not telling you which one you, you want to, but if you're watching this video about how to build your business, I'm telling you which one you have to, to accomplish that goal. And you might decide that's not for me. Fuck that shit. I want to keep getting high. I want to keep going to, to all these parties. 
I want to keep having um, casual sex with random people. And, and, and that's cool. Then go ahead and do that, man. Just know what sacrifice you're making and just make peace with that. Maybe success ain't for you. Like this kind of success ain't for you. And that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm sure you have redeeming qualities outside of your work ethic. You know what I'm saying? And you can just lean on those a little bit. Right. But to get this money, man, you're going to have to, you're going to put sacrifice. Now, some people say, oh, but what about enjoying life? What about you assholes are the worst. <laughs> you motherfuckers are the worst. Because when you say enjoying life, you're talking about hedonism. You're talking about vacation, get high, drunk, casual sex and all this stuff. And there's nothing wrong with that within itself. It's just if that's the only way you can enjoy life, then I think there's a problem with that. You know, that's just escapism. Right. What if you found joy? What if you enjoyed life by pushing yourself? How far you can actually push yourself, man, seeing how far you can take things, seeing what you can what you can handle of uh, what if you took pride in doing things that other people aren't willing to do right what if you took pride in actually pushing yourself to your limits and fulfilling your real potential because make no mistake those vices are keeping you from fulfilling your potential those vices are like a anchor keeping you in place so you can hold on to that anchor if you like or you can really try to fulfill your potential right but you know the, the choice is yours <laughs> the choice is definitely yours all right now you got time Mo all of you guys got time man i'm telling you man if you do this exercise i'm sure you'll be able to find time oh one thing some asshole always says what about going to the bathroom and commuting and fucking taking the shit and cooking food listen if you're spending this much time in the bathroom you're spending fucking 45 hours <laughs> in the bathroom and commuting and taking shit then you have problems that are beyond the scope of anything I could cover in this video, right? You need to see a medical professional, maybe a psychologist. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right? Because I'm talking about the things that take a, a big amount of time. And if you commute, man, let's add the fucking commute. I don't care. Fucking add the commute. What do you, you Even if a, a fucking long ass commute, boom. Let's say fucking, it's two hours each day. <laughs> you take an hour to get there and an hour to get back, man, five days a week. Right, that puts you at what, 50? Let's say you got the fucking long ass commute. No problem, bitch. Right? <laughs> that has you at 35 hours. Boom, you can still build a business off that. Fucking weirdo. Fucking hate you. What about the bathroom, shower, and commute? Fucking hate you. Listen, hey asshole, you can argue for your limitation if you like, right? I'm telling you, you can do it. And you fucking losers are gonna give me all these reasons why you can't do it. You know what that means? That means I fucking believe in you more than you believe in you. I see why you don't believe in yourself because you're out here arguing for your own limitation. Hey, and if you argue for your limitation, you get to keep it. Congratulations. Stop watching this video and fucking embrace mediocrity. Now, 10 to 100K, this is like, this is where you start making progress. This is when you're actually making some fucking progress and the game changes over here. This is the point where you got a real business. You're, you're getting some momentum right and, and this is where you want to start replacing yourself you want to start replacing yourself at this point you know maybe you hire someone else to do customer service you pick the lowest value task and start replacing having paying other people to do it maybe someone else does the accounting right i think you should at this point you should still do the sales and marketing but maybe like the actual product or service someone else does it right i'll tell you what i did when i when i started my online fitness business i was one of the pioneers in that industry online training i don't say i invented it but i was definitely in the class of i was one of the pioneers i was one of the first people to ever do online training i was right there with them right and um one of the first things i did was i hired uh other coaches to actually do the coaching right they would still do my protocol but they would check in with the clients every day they'd make sure that they were following their macros and make sure they was uh, following the workout plans and all that stuff and uh, that freed up a lot of time and then i used the remainder of that time to just do more sales and marketing then that's what you want to do you want to start replacing yourself you don't have to do it all at once but one at a time all right now this point you can quit your job if only under certain circumstances you can quit your job if you are making this is two criteria, right you can quit your job if you are making at least the same amount that your job was paying you like as far as personal income like so that's including anyone you pay to replace yourself if the profit you're making is replaces your, your current income and you have six months of saving right because you're making progress but you ain't got it like that where you know that nothing can go wrong you know what i'm saying uh, you still want to be responsible and be able to take care of yourself 
and then something may go something may go haywire in the you know macroeconomic infrastructure right there might be a fucking war or something you know uh it might be a economy crash or there might be another recession you don't know but you want to be able to protect yourself for six months and that's gonna leave you enough time to get back on your feet and understand right so you can quit your job at this point you can quit your job but only if you you know if you when you can scratch those two boxes off right if you if you qualify for those two criteria you need to be bringing in into your pocket just as much as your previous job and you need to have six months of savings right when i say six months of savings means you you can actually cover your expenses you and whoever you're responsible for right wife kids dogs animals right for six months that, that's the responsible thing to do fuck with these losers i tell you just fucking quit do everything that's <laughs> it'd be difficult to overstay how dumb that is here's another thing i see man at this point somebody might be just making just at the 100k mark or right above it and they want to start another business <laughs> they want to start another business don't start another biz i'm gonna say this all throughout this thing don't start a second biz right you need to focus on this you can make a million dollars doing any business man you know what i'm saying this million dollar plumbing companies this million dollar fucking lawn care companies this million dollar fucking anything you can make you don't have to switch businesses don't start another one right well we're gonna we're gonna be focusing on getting this one right but i feel like every day i have to talk an entrepreneur off the ledge when he wants to start another business like almost daily i have to get a motherfucker to not to start another business focus is super important focus and then if you are making way more money than you need Oh, don't increase expenses. Don't increase living expenses. What you want to do is invest any surplus money back into your business at this point or into assets. Nah, at this point, you want to be putting it back in your business, right? Because what you want to be doing is buying time. You want to buy more time. We'll talk about this later, right? But don't don't increase uh, living expenses. You, know, you already quit your job. Shit is fucking weird right now. <laughs> like you're, far, you're probably fucking scared if you got any sense because I was fucking scared when I did it, right? So just either save up even more money and or in what I was doing, I was pumping it back in my business, any surplus and just paying myself what I needed to live at this point because fucking between 10K and a fucking 100K a month, that ain't fucking baller money, you know what I'm saying? That ain't fucking Richard Millet money, you know what I'm saying? Chill out, all right? So we've been talking about how to go from zero from one to one million. We already covered uh, the steps you need to take from going from zero to 10k a year and 10k to 100k a year now we we doing something you're making between 101 million dollars per year this is where things start to get real interesting this is when you really start building your foundation this is when you really start to build your foundation right to really start balling now check this out first thing this is super important put a star on it don't start <laughs> another biz i'm telling you don't do it these guys always want to do it. even at the million dollar mark these guys always want to do this shit i shit you not multiple times per week i have to talk an entrepreneur out of starting another business that is not what you want to do you want to keep doing what you're doing and increase the effectiveness of your current business and the way you do that is you actually increase l t v right you want to focus instead of starting a whole new business increase the lifetime value of your customer now i talked about this in other videos but it bears repeating lifetime value of a customer means the amount of money a customer is expected to spend with you on average throughout the life cycle of your relationship with them right lifetime value and there's i have four preferred methods of increasing lifetime value there's a few of them but here's my preferred one now and they're they're categorized as things with that make you you, you want to get them to spend more spend more money you can get them to buy more things and then there's ways you can do this that are fast and then there's ways that are low now check this out get them to spend more money the first fast way to get them to spend more is you want to raise prices so in order to do that you want to raise prices <laughs> and the only way to do that is to really keep improving your product or service like make it so good that they'd be happy to pay the additional price what you don't want to do is just raise it arbitrarily right you want to keep improving your product or service to the point where they feel like they get a deal even if you raise the price 
Does that make sense? So you want to have a relentless focus on improving your product or service. But you can also, you can just raise prices because price is malleable, man. <laughs> like you could just raise the price. You know what I'm saying? Price is, is malleable. And, mo and a lot of times, I, I want to take back what I said about not arbitrarily raising prices. What I see with a lot of new entrepreneurs is they don't charge enough to begin with, right? They're trying to undercut the competition. And the problem with that is if you were competing on price, you might win, right? You might fuck around and have the lowest price, which means you make the least amount of money or at least the least amount of profit because it's gonna cost money to acquire the customer, right? There's a, and and there's, there's a cost included in delivering the product or service to the customer, right? So if you have low prices then you don't, you have low profits, right? So you want to raise the prices, man. Just raise your prices, you know? <laughs> Now, another way, a fast way to get them to buy more is what's called the upsell. So the upsell is when you add an additional product or an additional level of service to your existing product catalog, right? You just get them to buy more and they'll be super excited to do that if you've done a good job in the first part, if you've actually delivered a good product or service to them, right? Um, this works for two reasons. One, it's easier to sell to somebody you already sold to. Think about it. I say, I tell you, man, you gotta have sex with somebody today. You're probably gonna go find someone you already had sex with, right? That's gonna be the highest likelihood of success, <laughs> right? Hey, and if you got a girlfriend, that's where easy. She's right there. They gonna kill me. <laughs> Listen, if we don't have intercourse right now, they're gonna kill me, right? She'll do it, right? And however, what if you had to go out and meet a new person, seduce them, <laughs> yeah, that, shit man now you just rolling the dice man you just fucking rolling the dice right it's easier to sell somebody you already sold to so once you have a customer if you provided them with a good experience it'll be easier to sell to them again also more profitable because there's always a cost associated with acquiring a new customer so you get the they buy something else from you for <laughs> but you don't have to spend money to get that customer because they're already a customer Right, so you sell something else to your existing customers. Something that actually works with the thing they bought before. For example, with, when I had the supplement line, our core products, the ones we would market, the pre-workout, the coffee, and our fat burn, right? Those are our like top tier products, the ones we would actually market to people, right? But what we didn't do was um, we didn't market like the creatine, like the regular shit. It was just regular ass creatine monohydrate, right? Regular ass creatine monohydrate. But as soon as somebody bought something, they'd be immediately asked if they wanted to add creatine to their order for 50% off. And it's like they already bought something and they get a deal for buying it. It was an easy sale. We made a lot of money with that strategy, right? It was super effective. And if they didn't buy right there, they'd get an email right after. Hey man, save some money on some creatine, right? It was, it was super effective. It was super, super effective strategy and you don't have to pay for that customer. They're already a customer, right? So upsell them. Now, the slower way to get them to spend more is to, sweat and bullets hoping I spell this right. <laughs> Reduce churn. All right. <laughs> Reduce churn. What is churn? So if you have somebody, you know, on some sort of subscription or some sort of um, payment plan or anything like that, is churn is when they leave the the subscription or they stop uh when they unsubscribe from your product or when they don't fulfill their their payment plan right so you want to reduce churn and you do that by actually improving the product or service you know what i'm saying do it to the point where they they would feel fucking stupid to to get rid of it netflix does a good job with this netflix has super low churn that's because they're always coming out with new shit they're always coming out with new shit and they get new seasons of new shit. So sometimes they'll they'll put a whole season up so you can binge watch it. But a lot of times, man, they just putting out one a week, right? They still they do that, right? They put out one fucking episode and then they put a new one out the next week. Netflix do that. I don't watch a lot of fucking Netflix. They do that, right? Anyone? Yes. Minovia Ablar C. <laughs> so they do that. They got all the fucking episodes filmed. <laughs> they got all the episodes filmed, but they're going to leak them out to your goofy ass over the course of at least a month. <laughs> and that way they get, they're going to get another fucking $10 or $12 or whatever the fuck it costs. Right. And then right after that, they're going to hit you with another season. They're going to keep doing that shit over and over again. They keep they spend a lot of money on actually coming up with new shows and new shit. 
right? To keep your ass locked in, you know what I'm saying? Keep your ass locked in. And you gotta figure out ways to to keep your customers satisfied and happy so you can reduce churn. This easily makes you more money because they're gonna spend more money through you and that's gonna raise um, the lifetime value. Now, then we have the cross sale. This is when you offer them a product or service from maybe another company, someone else's product or service, right? And you get some sort of commission off of that, right? And it should be something that's complimentary. For example, a lot of times when I speak on stages, I do a lot of public speaking, uh, they'll sell tickets to the event to the people and then they'll have, they'll let the speaker sell something from the stage and then they get a commission from that, right? So they already made money off the price of it. Boom, they might've did an upsell, hey man, get VIP access but then the speakers are selling stuff and they get a commission, right? So that's that's the cross sale. And you can put more money into your business by selling other people's shit. And you can work with their business. You can sell your product or service to their customers, right? And that way you give them a commission, but you don't have to pay for the customer. You pay for the customer with the commission you give to the person. That's easier than advertising, right? Because they got a whole customer base that trust them. So when they recommend you to them, that customer is more likely to buy and vice versa, right? The cross sale works really well, right? These are things you need to do to increase your lifetime value is what you should be focusing on. Also, at this point in the game, the only thing you should be doing is increasing lifetime value and or doing sales or marketing. You wanna pick one of these <laughs> and only do that one, right? So maybe you do all the sales and then you hire someone else to do your Facebook ads or some shit. All you should be doing is sales and marketing. I'm telling you, you should be hiring people to do every other part of your business. This is gonna give you more what, more time. And then you focus on the thing, on the part of your business that makes the most money. For me, it would be sales because, let's say, if you're not making sales, you ain't got a business, you got a hobby, you know what I'm saying? You pick either the sales or the marketing and you do that. That's the only thing you do in your business and working on increasing lifetime value. That's all you should be working on. If you wanna know how to do this, right? How to actually build your business to the point where it's like other people are doing the majority of the work, a great book to read is called The E-Myth, and it's really all about systemizing your business and putting people in places to do these different uh, positions, all right? People understand in the business, but I get a lot of pushback when I tell people to do this in your personal life, but I only get pushback from fucking poor people, right? All my rich friends are like, yeah, that's that's controversial, right? <laughs> right, so think about, let's think about your business life, I mean, your personal life, all the shit you have to do, right? Let's say fucking, I don't know, laundry, cleaning, cooking, Grocery shopping, fucking what else? Minovia? Uh, nah, man. We already told them to quit their job. <laughs> what the fuck are real people do? It's so long. I've been, I'm so far removed from this shit. Cook, clean, laundry. What else do you motherfuckers do? <laughs> Domestic shit you guys do. Is there anything else? I guess those are the main things. All right, whatever. Cool. All this shit, you need to fucking start paying other people to do at this point in the game, right? You shouldn't be doing laundry. You shouldn't be fucking cleaning nothing unless you really love cooking, but I wouldn't, right? You definitely shouldn't be doing groceries. You know, so when I was at this level, man, I was fucking, um, the, one of the first things I did was I stopped fucking grocery shopping. I just, we didn't have Instacart and Postmates and all this other shit back then. The only service that did that was um, Fresh Direct. And I paid like a little bit more to not have to go to the grocery store. I saved so much time. Boom. Then I just stopped cooking. You know, you get meal prep. When I was broke, it was it was meal prep. I just got meal prep companies. Oh, no, I'm sorry. The first thing I stopped doing was laundry. I apologize. I stopped doing laundry, man. Little Korean man used to come through, pick up my shit, drop it off. And he did it better than I did it. You know how many times I folded underwear in my life? Zero. <laughs> but I get that shit and it's folded up perfect. They doing it better than me, man. I'm, a, you know, I'm gonna take this shit out of the dryer, throw that shit in the drawer or on the floor. I don't, it doesn't matter, right? Yeah, <laughs> I'm definitely not cleaning, man. You can go on fucking task grab right now and get a fucking immigrant. <laughs> and I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I just mean like they out here working. They're working hard. They're trying to get it. You know what I'm saying? To fucking clean your, your whole crib, man, for like $30 an hour. Man. And then you spend that time working, right? Because at this level, you're making more money than $30 an hour. You should be somewhere at this level for sure. You know, honestly, I would have started doing that at level two. I think you should start doing that at level two or even level. It just depends, man. I, I, I started doing this shit early, but I know you guys are fucking scared to do it or whatever. But you shouldn't do none of it. And you, what you're doing is you're buying time and you can put that time back into your business. 
and or and or or fucking pump these numbers up spend more time with your fucking family if that's your thing right just we're just not doing bullshit anymore <laughs> right you can spend that spend 40 hours a week with your family right once you once you stop cooking cleaning and doing laundry and all the domestic shit right you can buy some of your time back because you can always make more money but you can never get more time when the time is gone it's gone forever so you shouldn't be doing domestic shit and the only things in your business you should be doing at this level is either sales or marketing pick one do that one and then raising lifetime value that's all you should be doing that's all you should do. and zero domestic shit i'm gonna even say even if you enjoy cooking don't do it find something else you like more man you know what i'm saying fucking go see your kids man play with your kids or some shit you know do, do something all right then we get to one meal to ten mil one meal to ten mil all right this this is when you actually start to ball you really start the ball. The most important part of this, we we'll be clear about it. Don't start another biz. <laughs> Do not start another business. Motherfucker. I cannot stress that enough. Do not start another business. I'm going to tell you what it looked like. I was thinking another the million year on oh, oh, business. Then I said, hey, man, let me start this, you know, with my fitness business. Then I said, fuck it. Let me start a fucking, um, what did I start? A, a, a food prep company, a keto food meal prep company, right? Then I was actually, I had a marketing agency where I managed other influencers and ran their, their businesses and all that shit. And I had a business where um, I had some clothing lines with some other uh, influencers and a bunch of other fucking harebrained ideas. <laughs> and then when I was doing all this other shit, I was making around two mil. The first year I stopped doing all this shit. And I just, I said, you know what? I'm just gonna pick one business and just focus on that. I made fucking four mil. <laughs> year one just by focusing so i don't know how many years because i hovered around this fucking one million two million fucking level for like mad long and it was because i kept spreading myself thin i kept coming up with all these fucking ideas oh let's do this let's do that right plus you know fucking personal life going crazy it was just too much that's how you go nowhere fast this is how you make moves right i immediately doubled my income year after that it doubled again you know what I'm saying? Well, they didn't double again, but we were doing 3X what we were doing before, right? So it was like six. Just by staying focused, I feel like I'm always talking entrepreneurs out of starting new shit. I always am. And listen, man, if you ain't making at least 10 million a year off your fucking current business, then don't fucking do no new shit. You're gonna have to start over too, asshole. Remember, you're gonna have to start over. Remember, you had to fucking do everything yourself. Then you had to hire people to do all this shit. I was doing this thing, this shit in like multiple different businesses. Then I, when I consolidated it all to one, it was just way more energy, right? You know? All right, so don't start another biz. You want to have a relentless focus on lifetime value, right? So you want to go even harder with that, right? And at this point, you should not be doing the marketing and sales of your business. This is when you stop doing all of it. You're not doing nothing. The only thing you're doing in your business is like planning. You're working on the LTV and raising that, and then you're, you're, you're managing. So your only job is to manage this fucking team of everybody doing everything else and focusing on raising the lifetime value of your customer. That's it. At this point, you can start raising your living expenses. Only at this point, you gotta be making at least a million before you start raising your living expenses. And you wanna make sure you're only doing it passive income. Remember we talked before, you start investing in, in stocks, real estate, and other shit, right? So if you're making enough money off passive income to raise your lifestyle, to increase your, your standard of living, then do that. Obviously, I don't look at this as raising your standard of living. These are investments. When you got people doing all this other shit, that's an investment because you're buying time and you're going to use that time to make more money. Pay for that's, that's how investment was work, motherfucker. All right. When you put money into something and then use that to, and it makes you more money, that's an investment, right? So time is a big, your business investment. When you start outsourcing these domestics in your life, you are fucking buying time and using that time to make more money. That's an invest. I don't even look at it as like raising my standard of living, but it's always talk, talk about at this level, you can start raising your standard of living. Hey, go get a better house. You know what I'm saying, go get a better apartment, move it a bit, move out the hood. Now you can move out the hood. You know what I'm saying? Move your mom out the hood. Take your kids, snatch your kids out of public school. It's time now. We're ready. All right. Do it with the passive income though. Right. You know what I'm saying? You ain't ready for the Richard Hill yet. All right. But get, get you a, get you a Rolex. You know what I'm saying? Maybe a, a, an Omega. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Hey, fucking Cartier, you ain't ready for this yet, right? But you can you can start raising your expenses. You know what I'm saying? And then I don't have a lot of advice for the 10 mil plus because you know that's where I'm at. <laughs> so I, you know, I'm I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest with you, I'm still figuring it out. But I think this should 
kind of illustrate, you know, the steps you need to take to go from zero to a mil and, and beyond. And as you can see, it's not as easy as a lot of these motherfuckers be trying to tell you it is on the internet. And I just wanted to try to dispel a lot of the myths um, and kind of set you on the right path. You know, one of the main things you have to do is get your time in order. Like time is the most important currency, right? And you gotta start tracking it. And I have a video about that somewhere around here and we'll make sure we post it, all right? Check it out now.